The person I'd like to acknowledge the most would have to be my grandmother. Um, she was the rock of our family. And I mean, unfortunately she passed away in 2017. Um, but every day I get to come to work, I, I mean, I work at my house, but every time I come to my office in my house, I get to look at this. I mean, I look at this while I work, um, but it's just, the battle she fought was just horrible. Um, but she always smiled and every time I came around her, she would smile and show me that she was strong and that she could do this. And I mean, just right there, I mean, when, when a person's feeling that way and you feel so helpless and they're still smiling to, to show you, I mean, that they can do this. I mean, it, it means a lot and it just, it sucks that people have to go through that. Um, but just what she came from, I could talk about it for hours. I mean, she was just a heck of a woman. Um, and I, I'm proud to be able to say that was my grandmother. Um, but yeah, I mean, when she passed away, it's kind of a big reason why I came over to this. And uh, I just, I really want to acknowledge her because she went through so much in her life. I mean, she had 16 siblings. I mean, and they lived in Sicily. They had no education. They came to America. I mean, my grandfather passed away of a massive heart attack and uh, he was 39 and she had to take care of herself and four boys. And she overcame that and the business that my grandpa left her, I mean, she turned it into an empire with no education. And um, She was just a beast. And, and she kind of, all the hard work that I have and all the morals and everything I live by is, I mean, her. And uh, I mean, I just really have to acknowledge her and she was a special woman. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Mark and Joe Stout's mom. I mean, she was one of my grandmother's best friends and I mean, they were always together and I mean, she really made my grandmother happy and I know they made each other happy, but um, towards the end there was a struggle for my grandmother and uh, I know that their mom really made her happy and you know, it was nice to have a friend because she was widowed. and. Uh, they're awesome people, and I really wish my grandmother was still here. I know she still is here with me to, I mean, watch this journey, but um, I just hope I'm making her proud. And I mean, a lot of this I dedicate to her and also my newborn baby because, I mean, the motivation I got from him to just, I mean, to drive and, I mean, changed your whole life. So I just really am I'm grateful for everything. And um, I mean, there's a lot of people I wish that were still here that we've lost, but um, I do it all for them and myself, and I just hope they're proud. The best way to describe the journey, I mean, it was just crazy and it went so fast. Um, when I first started, I was going to school full time, working at my family's restaurant part time, doing this part time, and rehabbing my first property when I had time. So, I mean, I'd literally go to school at seven in the morning, get done at 11, um, go to the office, sit there with Gino, and then I would go to the restaurant, work there till 10 or 11 at night, then come home whatever nights that we could and work on the house. Um, so it was crazy. It was a lot, I mean, a lot to handle and it was just, I always was doing something. Um, but then, you know, I finished school the next year, started coaching football. Um, was doing that varsity level here. Um, team went nine and all was so much fun. I lost the second round in the playoffs. And then after that COVID hit and then my family really needed me because it was hard to find employees to work at the restaurant. So I was working there pretty much full time. And then um, then I found out in that following September that my girlfriend was pregnant and so then I had to really decide, I mean, what I was going to do. And, uh, I just decided to roll with this full time. And I can't tell you how many guilt trips I got for leaving my family's restaurant and they still guilt trip me into working there now and then. But, um, I mean, it was a great decision that all my time I put into this and I mean, I did this with no money. So it's been Facebook posts, word to mouth, um, just networking and just customer service. I mean, if I treat every customer like they're my family. And I, I mean, I really, I mean, that's how we did it at the restaurant. And I took that same model and brought it over here. And every client I deal with, I don't care if they need my help with anything, I will drop whatever I'm doing and help my client, whatever it is. And, you know, sometimes it affects my life outside of work because how committed I am to that. But I mean, as long as my clients are happy, I'm happy. My advice on how to enjoy the journey um, would be just to have fun. Uh, know when it's the right time to have fun and know when it's the right time to work. Uh, but I've pranked Gino so many times, I'm surprised the guy still has hair. Um, prank calling, making two people call each other at once. I mean, we've had so much fun in the office. It's It's been great. Going out to eat, going for I mean lunches with the guys, breakfast, early mornings, working out together. I mean, it's a family. So just have fun 
Enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride, enjoy, have fun with making phone calls, make it a competition. If you have a buddy you're working close by with, meet up, um, see who can make more calls, who can close more, make a competition. I mean, we like to gamble a little bit, so uh, put a little wager on uh, who can, you know, get some stuff, who's gonna get the most appointments set. Or, we just had so much fun with it and we, we got creative and uh, basically just have fun, enjoy the people around you and make a lot of memories. With a $10,000 bonus, I plan to take half of it and reinvest it back into my business. And then I'm gonna take the other half and I'm gonna to add to my shares of Careleaf and Fisker.